Hi, I'm Sanford Levy from Jenkinstown Antiques in New Paltz, New York, and I'm happy to be participating in the Ruby Lane Antiques at Rhinebeck show, and happy to be here with Lee, and looking forward to talking about these antiques. Sanford, thanks for bringing these two lovely pictures. Thanks for being here overall. Uh, it's, it's exciting. This is it's good to see you. Time. Yes. Thank you. Yes. What'd tell you, you about these paintings. These are signed uh, by an artist named Cole, mm -hmm. not the famous Thomas Cole. Right. And they're, uh, they depict a farm in Sydney, New York, which is in the middle of the state, kind of where you're from. Right. And uh, they're probably from the mid 19th century. They're done on DeVoe artist boards. Right. And uh, they're very exciting in their original frames with paint decoration. Really nicely done, the way that they used gold paint to, to almost simulate a, a, a fancy French, a fancier French frame. That's true. Done on this mid-century uh, American frame. Really cool. Yes, yes. So what do we have on the left? We have a farm scene. Yes, I, I believe they're probably the same farm, and they are ascribed to Sydney, New York. And um, there, yes. there's the barn with the horses, and uh, I love the yellow uh, buildings in that one there. Pretty yeah, really exciting, good. Really and the nice. uh, stone bridge is very good. Right, and, very uh, nice. They're beautiful renderings of rural New York from the mid 19th century. Well, thanks for bringing them. They, sure. They're really they're they're great as a pair. They it'd be great if I we just found one, but to have two. Yes, I, I I was very excited when I was able to purchase them. May I ask where you found them? I found them from a dealer who lives up right in that neighborhood. Really? And she said she's had them for about 30 years. Wow. So I was very happy to get them. Well, yeah. thanks for bringing sure. the, both. Yeah. Thank you very much, Sanford. Yeah. So this is lovely. Uh, well, this too is a mid-19th century oil on board. Okay. And uh, lately I've seen a lot of this style painting attributed to Joseph Hidley or to Thomas Chambers, right. uh, but I'm always reluctant to give these wild attributions yes. to these kind of pictures, especially when they're pseudo Hudson River. Right. Uh, I do deal in a lot of formal Hudson River paintings, but this definitely has that naive look uh, with the uh, disproportionate sailboats, people, right. and buildings. Right. Yes, but it's got great detail, wonderful color, and it's in untouched original condition. Absolutely untouched. Yeah. It's, it yeah. looks like it might be the original frame. As I think well. it probably is. Uh, yeah. Let's look yeah. at the back. Uh, first, first of all, in the front, I just want to say that I, I love the fact that it looks like it's a uh, paddle wheeler. Yeah, the paddle uh, wheeler, wheeler, tiny, like yeah. half, half the, the size, size of, of what, what it should be. Yeah, right. right. And the figures are in the foreground, large, like they should be. But there's there are a lot of figures actually. When you look around, there's really a lot a lot going on. Yes. And uh, let's see. See the Just, back, the, yeah. the, and it's covered with paper, but probably hasn't been moved really. No, since. it doesn't look like it's been touched. <laughs> yep. Uh, yeah. Yes. Really yeah. nice, really nice piece. Thanks. Sure. Thanks very much. Oh, this is nice. Yes. This is uh, oh. Hard Tyler. Oh yeah. Um, okay, so so you have a Yard Tyler. Bayard Tyler. Oh, I'm sorry. Can uh, I say that again? I'm sorry. My I, fault. It's all Bayard. right. Let's start I, I over. Be, yeah. Okay. It, it's, uh, they'll add it all. A Bayard, right? Mm -hmm. I got it. My fault. You have a Bayard Tyler painting. Right. This is a, a view to Skytop Mohonk, the hotel oh. in Mohonk. Yes. That's and statement. two years ago, I wrote this catalog of the collection of the paintings up at Mohonk. And uh, the cover painting here is also by Bayard Tyler, yes. another view. He's a Westchester, New York artist who actually summered in New Pulse and painted up at Mohonk a lot. But my catalog is, uh, I do talks up at the hotel about their painting collection. Artists have left paintings at Mohonk since the mid 19th century and they have been acquiring others. But uh, Bayard Tyler did paint in the entire New Pulse area. Uh, we've seen paintings by him of the stone houses and a lot of the local features. Really nice. Yeah. Uh, great uh, little uh, impressionist picture. It's got some great old labels on the back. People, and, and people are able to buy it from the from the expert on paintings done in that area. Done at Mohonk, guy, yes, yeah, yes. done at Mohonk. And, and it's uh, got some great old labels oh, on it. Oh, the Salamagundi Club. Yep. Right there. That, that's, that, that was a 
a lot of the great artists uh, showed showed there, right? Yes. The, were members of the club and showed right. their paintings. This is so described right right here, right? The Salma Gundy Club. Uh, yeah. Tyler was rec uh, was uh, represented there yeah. uh, very often. Yeah. So e evening at New Paltz, right? Yes. Yeah. 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 That's and that's Sky Top Mohonk. Yes. Wow. Yes. Really nice. Very nice. Uh, nice, nice painting. Thanks for bringing it. Sure. I love the colors in it. Yeah. I really do. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We just hold that. Is that all right? Yeah, that's fine. We could do a quick talk yeah, about yeah, this. Yeah, I'll just hold it. Um, uh, this is a small painting by James Scott. He's a, a Hudson Valley artist from the 1920s. And uh, right now, there's a whole group doing uh, research on a community called the Elverhoy community. It was like a small Woodstock community right on the Hudson. There were silversmiths, potters, uh, women making clothing, and a theater there in the 1920s and 30s. So we're presently looking for uh, works by people besides James Scott, Joseph Papelka, Otto ba Bacher, Willow Bacher, and Ralph Pearson, who were the artists at work in there. And a uh, former professor at the college, at New Paltz College, right. is re presently writing a book, and we're going to do a show about this Elverhoy community, that's, which that's is, uh, yeah, it's very exciting to me. I spent a lot of my time writing about dead artists. <laughs> and when I, I first discovered J uh, James Jeez. Scott by buying a big painting uh, of his at the uh, one of the winter antique shows in New York. And I knew nothing about James Scott, and neither did the dealer. So I was very happy to buy the painting, take it home, and I've exposed a lot of interest in this whole Elverhoy community, which was in Marlboro, New York, right on the Hudson. Right in the Hudson, around... Uh, south of, uh, north of Newburgh, yes. south of Kingston. Wow, yeah. I, I I love the I love that color. It's that yes. uh, just just as it's getting dark, right? With the with well, the, the, the reflection. This one of was this. actually done in France, where Scott uh, was in the army and taught. Oh, uh, so he painted in France as well as in Marlboro, and did some wonderful Hudson River views. I love the way he, ca he captured the trail of a, uh, I think a, a ca uh, carriage or something, uh, just by yes. dragging the the end of the and brush. It's titled the paint. on the back. Oh, nice. Yes. Yes. Uh, Jay Scott. Uh, yep. Milton, New York, right? Right. 27. 1927 is signed, lower left, right? That, what, you've got the whole package here. The whole uh -huh. package. Right. And we're hoping to learn more and more about that whole community because well, they were filled with all sorts of artists. Well, hopefully this yeah. segment will bring some I'm more hoping. That's why I brought it along. <laughs> uh, you know, maybe somebody will say, oh, I have a pile of those. I'm really glad yeah. you brought it. Cool. Well, Make sure to call them up, okay? Call, yeah. <laughs> call Sanford if you get some great works from anyone in this yes. uh, group. Thanks. Thanks for bringing it, Sanford. Sure. What I brought along today is a small tea table that came out of a stone house in Hurley, New York. It's always lived there uh, until I bought it. And uh, it really is in a remarkable state of preservation. It, and it I'd love you to give your opinion of the condition of it as well. It's, uh, and what town did you find it in? Hurley, New York, oh, just Hurley, south of Kingston. Yeah, it, Beautiful yes. big stone house and where it's always lived. Oh, that's wonderful. I, I, well, first of all, I love, I love Hudson River furniture, and, and this has classic... Classic uh, stone. Classic stuff, a, a classic breadboard top, uh, white pine probably. Yes. And uh, they always call them breadboards, of course. As you know, I'm just telling our, our friends at home because it, they're... It looks like a breadboard, and right. the, the ends of the pine would would be uh, actually covered by this by this little strip. And tables like this were usually painted originally, and the paint on this it has a wonderful surface and everything. And the, but it had a history of being painted at an early date, right? So early that the feet have actually gathered dirt on the top surface right here, where it's darker, right? Where, and it, then it goes to light. That I mean, literally the paint. And we'll look underneath and see if there's a the, the, what the history of paint is under there. Paint's probably been off for uh, upwards of a hundred years from from this, this surface that I see, and it's it's actually we're looking at uh, typically these are made of cherry wood or maple, and that's what we have here is probably a maple, hard wood for the legs, soft wood uh, for the top, and uh, let's let's take the drawer out. 
And th look at these nice big dovetails, uh, Sanford. They don't uh, come much bigger than that. They really, <laughs> they really don't. And then the uh, rose head nails. And look at that. This, that. You don't have to look at that more than 10 seconds. To uh, know it's real. To know it's right, real, right. which you, you did when you were in the house. You looked absolutely. at it and said, oops, yeah. <laughs> this is absolutely right. You know? And let's put the drawer aside and turn it over, if we may. Yeah, well, maybe like this. Yeah. And so here we, we see that this, this is what you want to see is this lighter color inside. Uh, especially at the back where the, the drawer went all the way back and didn't let air uh, up there. So it hovered around here. And, and it literally is just almost not oxidized, just right. like it was put the day it was put in there. This is white pine. And, um, and out here, of course, on the, on, the, on the part that was exposed, look at the contrast be the, between what's protected and what's been, has lived a life outside. This indoors, outdoors, <laughs> right? That's great. And the history of paint here, the, the, the white paint, the red paint, there was even black paint uh, on at least the top. And I don't, you know, this, I, I see it in several areas on the side. I mean, it's, it's, the story of its life is right here. Like all, a, all, all original. Like a yes. tape recording. Yeah, 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 all original. I love the bead right here. Beautiful bead. Right. Classic uh, Hudson River style, that yes. finished edge. And, and that costs a little extra that, you know, it, you could make a simpler <laughs> table than this, right? Absolutely. <laughs> you know, yes. and, uh, so it's really a, just a clean as anything uh, table. And, and uh, this type of table like this is so simple, it could go in a modern setting as well, right? That's true. I mean, yes. you could have it with, I could see a modernistic picture over it because it has a, almost a shaker feel to it uh -huh. and its simplicity, right? It is typical Hudson River, simple yep. country furniture. Yep. Some yeah. some marks here on the side from uh, a, what sewing birds? I would think sewing birds. There yeah. are, or some and, uh, some sort of grinder at some point right. has been attached. A clamp. And, yes. And it wouldn't have left much of an impression in the maple, but in the in the white on pine, the pine it did. It sinks right into the soft wood. Yeah. But lovely table, Sanford. It's fun, always fun for me to see furniture, at, <laughs> given how much I love it. Yes. Yes. <laughs> And uh, and one more thing I just want to point out is that's really nice is the are the protruding uh, tenons on the side, and I can cut myself almost on the on the on, on the edges of them uh -huh. because as the wood has shrunk through the years they've been sticking out they've been they, yep. they they don't shrink right yep and they stick out so you can I always it's so one of the first things I do when I see protruding tenons is feel and you can feel the sharpness of the edge you know it hasn't been sanded. Where they, when they refinish oh, the yeah, piece, no. they sand that stuff right away. Not refinished. No, no. That's, but that's the evidence, right? Just I mean, old. The, the whole thing speaks to not being messed with. Right. And that's a really nice piece. Thanks that's for bringing the kind it. of thing I like. Yeah. I, <laughs> Thank you. I'm with you. What I brought along today is a piece of redware with a very odd overglaze. I've owned a lot of redware in my life, but I've never seen a piece quite like this. So I'm not sure of its origin, uh, but the condition is amazing. And it was purchased by a friend of mine uh, about 35 years ago from uh, the late Jack Wistans, who had a great oh, reputation great. in uh, buying and selling. So I, I thought it was amazing, and I'm hoping that someone says to me, Definitely, that's from a specific potter. Yes. And uh, it's just the shape is wonderful, the condition yeah. is amazing, and the glaze is really very interesting. I'm 100% with you. I, I love that this glaze is so unusual. Yeah, unusual. This yellowish right. green glaze, and then the, the uh, small handles, that, right. that, that instead of being spread out, they're, they're really tight. And I love, I love th this chip, which did not happen after it was made, it literally would have come out like this because this imperfection right. expanded. Right, it looks that way. Yeah, at a different rate and popped it, you know, yeah. in, in the kiln. I've seen many pieces like that where it's, what, what, the culprit is the firing and it right. was heated up at a different rate and popped off the chip. And it's great that it has its original top. The, yes, the original cover, I mean, I can't keep two, two, a pair of socks together for, yeah. for, 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 for weeks. This stayed together for over 200 years, you know. I would and think so. Yeah. This is a lovely, absolutely uh, matching top. Uh, the color is matching the, the redware from the same source. This is just, 
dirty from being used, uh, and the, which is just the way you want to see the bottom of an ovoid redware jar with a wonderful flare at the end of the of, of the of the foot that comes back out again, which is really distinctive. A distinctive it, potter. That's why I'm yes. thinking someone knows who made this. Yes. Uh, although I don't. All I'm guessing know. is kind of New England, and it's only a guess that you know. Towards towards Maine or you know upward right. you know northern New England it kind of feels that but that but that's just I guess because uh, maybe your phone will be ringing off the hook with people who yeah. know <laughs> you think they know and, absolutely but nonetheless whatever we know it's an American uh, circa eighteen give or take twenty to to to, to fifty you know uh, probably closer to the twenty jar and uh, a nice piece and in great condition. Great condition, yes. amazing. Thank you. So Sanford, what'd you bring? Well, I brought this along because it's the largest blown cheese dome I've ever seen. It's 14 inches uh, around, and it's got the rolled up lip on the bottom and an applied top. Right. It rings like a bell. Beautiful piece of glass That's in a... great condition. And um, wow. I just never see, I've own many of these but yes. never one this big I, and it's 14 inches in great wow. condition and uh did also come out of an old collection really nice yeah really nice probably at least a, a mid-19th century if I would not think, earlier yeah, yeah i would think mm, civil war period yep. or something like that right. for where you see them in homes it's a and great size just a beautiful piece of glass and these are really yeah. practical for people to use in in the home. Absolutely, I, I, they're great. To you keep know, a, a right. pie fresh, if you, instead of putting having to put it in the fridge, a pumpkin pie or something is, or cheese, of course, which is it yes. was made for. It's great for cakes and pies, though. But that's really perfect. And then the mice could just watch from the outside that's right. and say, oh, "I wish I could get in there," <laughs> you know. But they always find a way. Yes. No, not always. But not under this. Not under this. They're not going to get away with yes. it. That is the, the we, literally we have the the mother of all um, cheese domes, right? Right. <laughs> cheese covers. Yeah, blown glass dome. Blown glass dome, American, yes. 1850 to, to sure. 60. Yeah. Great. Thanks a lot, Sanford. My pleasure. Thank you very much for looking at these things. Thank you very much. And for looking forward to the Rhinebeck Show on Ruby Lane. <laughs>